¿no? Good morning and a warm welcome wherever you are to Cheche, the program where opinion counts, live on Citizen TV and Hot 96 FM. I'm Urwa Kamimo. Last night, another grenade attack in the country, in Mombasa again, this time at a nightclub. Meanwhile, politics continues as usual with divisions over the appointment of county commissioners replacing the provincial commissioners. And the ICC wants to four post-election violence suspects at The Hague in June for a status conference. There's plenty more to discuss here on Cheche with Citizen TV's Mtegi Njao and political analyst David Makali. But first, the presidential campaign of our guest this week. The man who made history by quitting his cushy job as the Education Permanent Secretary to make his run for the country's highest office. He is Professor James Ole Kiapi. Good morning all and welcome to Cheche. Good morning. Um, Professor Kiapi, I'll start with you because you're a presidential candidate and we just had um, another incidence of insecurity in the country last night. So how would a, uh, a President Kiapi deal, deal with the insecurity? Well, I, I think that uh, this particular incident um, is unfortunate, uh, it's, it's worrying. Uh, what happens whenever you have uh, a state of some sense of insecurity anywhere in the country, it's also possible for bad elements to take advantage. So it's difficult at this point to say whether this is an act of terror or whether it's just, uh, uh, you know, some individual who wants to play mischief. But I do think that there are three things that one must think about in terms of security. Number one, that we must engage with citizens across the country and address the issues that citizens are very worried or concerned about. And, and this cannot be casual, it has to be really deliberate. Number two, uh, for example, because of Al-Shabaab, uh, as our army is doing whatever they are doing, we must also take stringent measures uh, to tighten what is called homeland security. And this really means uh, movement within the country, uh, you know, we really got to watch that because our, porous, our borders are so porous. People are moving in and out and sometimes you don't really know what's going on. We've got to take very concrete measures. Number three, we also have to look at the factors that drive or bring about issues of insecurity, uh, whether it's economic imbalance or, the, the distrib you know, the inequitable distribution of resources and address this. So you have to separate whether the issues are uh, internal or external. Of course, if it is external aggression, then you have to address uh, that accordingly. But a lot of the times, I believe that uh, most of the things we're seeing in Kenya have to do more with uh, internal issues, you, you know, uh, parts of communities that are dissatisfied, and, you know, like th this M M MRC. These are Kenyans who, who feel for one reason or another that their issues are not being addressed and so forth. So I think it requires deliberate engagement. Uh, David, I'll turn to you. Are you convinced by how a president, uh, Kiapi, would deal with the insecurity in Kenya at the moment? I, th I think that uh, Professor is on top of things uh, from what he says. Uh, I must give him credit for you know, articulating the, the, the scope of the sort of action that would be required to, um, to undertake. Uh, I, however, think that uh, one of the things that this country needs to do right now is to conduct sort of uh, massive public awareness on security, uh, you know, in, in the general public domain. Uh, the sporadic, uh, you know, attacks, grenade attacks, explosions that are happening uh, are also um, a, a, a clutter and call to the public generally to be sensitive about uh, where you go and to, to mind your security in, in your environment. It is obvious that uh, government cannot uh, shut out or you know put out these uh, threats which are intermittent. Some of them, as you know, you can't tell whether they are from Al Shabaab or they're from some militants in MRC, uh, you know, extremists trying to you know test the resolve the government or so forth and so forth. So I think that it's time that the government uh, you know carried out um, a clear. A message to the public that look you must take the following precautions uh, in social places and so forth uh, in in you know they've attacked churches they've attacked uh, you know bus stages and so forth my worry is that as we get into the political season uh, this is going to be more worrisome because we will be having more gatherings uh, what will happen if we can't address and arrest this insecurity right. at this point? Well, Tegi, beyond the issue of public awareness and um, the engagement of uh, uh, the public, uh, and, uh, you know, is there an issue of small arms 
control in Kenya? Because where are these grenades coming from, given the heightened security that uh, we are living under these days? My concern is that um, these things come from somewhere. If it was in a place like Tanzania, if you live in Tanzania, you know that everybody is accountable for everybody else. You cannot go to a Tanzanian village and people just see you and let you go. You must be accounted for. In Kenya, that doesn't happen. The worst thing is that our intelligence, the NSIS, gets a lot of money. They have a big budget. What do they do with it? They don't know these things. They don't see those, 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 those grenades coming. <laughs> and and, and, and they, they must be manufactured from somewhere. So apart from that homeland security, you remember when after 9-11, the United States established a, a minister of internal uh, homeland security. Homeland security. We need to do that. Our home affairs ministry does not do anything of that. We need to have citizens accounting one another. But the money that special branch uses, use it to, to, to tell one inch to, infl to get one inch to, to know who is who, where. These, these grenades are not manufactured in heaven. They must be no, coming from a village. The two different well, things there, because you're talking about, you know, the Ministry of Home Affairs not doing anything. I, think, I believe we have a Ministry of Defense as well, um, and you're talking the about... The defense is out for, for outside it's operations. Right, but, 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 but the threats um, are similar, isn't, isn't it? Because you seem to be advocating the creation of a new um, body to look after um, internal security when that is not necessarily happening. We have a Minister of Home Affairs. We have a... Uh, internal security. Internal, internal security, security. Yes. Those ministry what what do they do and and of course the but how does the creation of another ministry I'm, I'm not saying we create one no, i think i think it really means that yeah. there has to be some hating a lot you yeah. know about security and and that brings into account the role of citizens that brings into account clear interventions in terms of you know who comes into kenya yeah. who goes into rural areas there, there has to be that sense of alertness and it is lacking right now so whether or not the ministry is doing a lot there is, there's just that sense of like something is lacking. We don't know what's going on. We just get these sporadic things happening. So security alertness in a growing population, in, in a polarized nation, has to take another dimension. Should people be dimension. fired? Yes. I think to the extent that they are, uh, you know, they, they, uh, you know, to the extent that they did not take actions or, or for acts of uh, omission or commission, yes, people should be held responsible. People should be, uh, whether that means firing or whether that means removed to, to other ministries, people should be held responsible. But I think throughout Kenya, the population has been growing subtly and people have not been really realizing the impact of a growing population and socioeconomic dynamics have on the security of the country. We really do need to tidy up in terms of security. I mean, maybe, maybe the other thing we need to ask is whether we have sufficient uh, security uh, agents or, or, or people. Or tools. Uh, yeah, or tools to actually uh, uh, heighten our security to the point necessary now. Because we've come from a regime when you know, some of these terrorist threats and, and uh, insurgencies were not within us. So maybe we need to be uh, boosting the budget of the NSIS, even though we are complaining $5 billion is already too much. I don't think it's, uh, don't think it's boosting. I think it's about, uh, it's about uh, counting, using it properly. No, we had we had uh, at one Somebody point something called. Uh, <laughs> we, we had at we'll one just time. Excuse me, take you he does that. <laughs> we, we had at one time something called community policing. It was really hyped up. It was everywhere. We had small stations all over, posts and everywhere. I don't think they are well manned at this point. I don't know whether it's because we have a few policemen uh, to be able to cover all the the posts and therefore give effect to community policing. Or the police actually went back to sleep after things seemed to be, uh, you know... But David, normal. doesn't it go back to the issue of, um, of uh, uh, you know, uh, responsibility? Because someone somewhere should be um, thinking about these issues. Someone somewhere should be saying that um, a terrorist organization has um, made Kenya the object of its fury. And so, therefore, certain measures need to um, be taken. And if those measures are not taken, somebody needs to be accountable. Um, uh, but when you say, Professor Kiapi, that somebody should be shifted to another ministry, isn't this uh, what happens in Kenya, musical chairs? No, I, I think that uh, sometimes if you blame officers uh, for lack of clearly defined programs, then really you're not solving the problem. What I really mean is that 
we must be very clear about what, what is the, nat you know, the national so, uh, security intelligence is doing, exactly. what is the AP, you know, what we call like, the, the, police, police, the police, and then regular police, the general uh, service police, GSU. So there are all these security agencies. And sometimes there is a sense in which the roles may be overlapping and ac accountability therefore also becoming a problem. I, I think there has to be a unit among this that, that is devoted, you know, 100% to, to really secure it. But you're, you're creating another, another, another level no, of bureaucracy. Let, 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 let me tell you something. Not necessarily. You. When after, after 19, after nine, the, the bombing in American embassy, and after 9-11, the Americans tried to uh, establish what they did after their, their issues. They have a, a joint uh, command made of all these groups. But yes. then they even wanted to finance, <clears throat> they failed because the military, uh, what they were asking who will be in charge. The special brand and the police. So there was none. They, they work separately. They do not coordinate the. the, 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 the He's talking the anti terrorism the way, police. They, they are, there's no, no shop. There uh, should not be. There shouldn't be. They, they you, be. We're talking across purposes, Professor Kiapi. I, I was saying, in terms of national security, there should be no sharp you know, the, the lines between one agency and another. It's all an integrated uh, sort of thing, in including, in, in, including the role of immigration, the Department of Immigration, How who comes into Kenya and who gets out, and what happens in our ports of entry and, you know, and, and ports of exit. So it, it, for me, it's an integrated, it's a continuum of things. Uh, there has to, there should, there should be no uh, uh, loophole anywhere. There should be no vacuum anywhere. Everything is... Very tight. Must be well, tight. Picking up